What up guys, this is Enigma here from Void Griefing and I was kind of on a date when I recorded this video um, my recording settings for Camtasia um, uh, were kind of messed up so I didn't actually have my headset enabled so I'm going to have to narrate this so basically first what you're going to do is you're going to do your check keys um, first obviously make sure you've got your public static booleans and your mods class or whatever you called it um, we're going to be do to doing two things in this episode which will be force field and sneak um, as you can tell by the title so I'm just going to call it KA for kill aura and sneak for sneak so excuse me while I narrate this is going to be kind of annoying um, then make your check key commands like we've done a lot of times and then do your uh, draw strings So I'm just going to copy and paste it because I'm lazy. K for force field and Z for sneak. And we'll, we'll put that drawstring in in a minute. It's just I didn't do it. Well, yeah, I didn't I didn't put the check key for sneak in, but we'll put it there in a second if you just keep watching. And I will talk you through the commands as well, through the text and the code and tell you what it means, in case you're curious. And then I'm just going to copy these two and then I'm just going to remove the exclamation marks and I'm just going to switch a few things around down here. Now for a second there where it says exclamation mark mods dot step, I thought I had to delete that but I didn't because that was from last episode where we couldn't get step to work properly. But we figured it out. Um, and then I just switch 2472 and we switch it to on. So that's that. Simple enough. And then here I add the check key for the sneak. Then what you want to do is now that you've got your drawstrings in place, you want to open up net.minecraft.src and you want to open up entity client player mp. So go ahead and open that up, and then what you're going to search for is send motion updates, and it's the second one, the public void send motion updates. So just in that body, what you're going to type in is if mods.ka or whatever you call that we're going to do a for statement so for int i and basically that's um because index like when we're indexing something like something from a list we always have to use an int so int i equals zero so we start for zero to i is less than mc dot the world dot loaded entity list dot size basically that's saying for all the entities in the world or in the loaded area we're going to do a simple we're going to do a check and that check is basically saying is the entity within distance of attacking range and if so then we're going to do like we're going to attack it if, if it's the right entity so then we're going to do two parentheses and we're going to say if entity because um, because it's a list, we have to we have to say that it's an entity. Um, then we're going to say mc dot the world dot loaded entity list dot get i. So that's saying if like the entity like i. So if if the if the entities in the loaded world is not equal to this, which means if it's not the player. Um, because we don't want to attack ourselves. Because if we didn't put that in, then it would attack. Our, it would it would basically just make you attack yourself, which would be pointless. It's saying if entity mc dot the world blah blah blah, it does not equal this and and that means two ampersands means and in Java. Um, don't just put one. You have to put two. And it's saying if the distance, if you get distance sq to entity, and again we're going to do entity. And outside of that parenthesis, we're going to do mc dot the world dot world identity list dot get i. 
Now I paused here for a little second and that's just because I was wondering um, what casts were for what statement so that's why I got confused but it's, it's like you know where my cursor is right now it's not there it's one to your right so it's just before the final bracket so uh, in there not in there like in the next one yeah in there less than 25d and that's the, that's the attacking range and then open up your cast or your squiggly brackets whatever you like to call them I think I'll call them brace, braces from now on because I think that's the actual proper name now we've got to do an art if statement and that's this one is basically saying if the, if the entity is of a certain kind for example you can change this to entity mob entity player or entity animal but I'm going to do entity living and that means anything that's living so that's any animal, any mob, any player um, first I actually type in instance of and I say entity entity player but that's only if you want to attack players but if you want to attack other mobs then you want to change that to entity living so that's saying if if that entity that, that's loaded in the world is and if it's close enough if that entity is a player then basically we're going to say attack the entity but obviously I'm going to change that to entity living because we want it to attack any entity of living that's within that range <laughs> I'm sorry if this is getting confusing but hopefully you can understand then we're going to do mc.playerController mc.playerController I don't know why I paused here um, Okay, wheel to pause. Ignore the pause. <laughs> it's not mc.player, it's mc.playerController. And I spelled it wrong here, but I'll fix it in a second. Dot attack entity. And this takes two arguments. The first argument is what, what entity would be attacking. And the second entity is the thing it is attacking it. I mean the thing it's going to attack. So this means the player and the second one is entity uh, mc dot double road dot loaded entity list dot get i and we put entity in cast because it's taking it from a list and we want to make sure that we're saying it's an entity so it can register it to attack it. And then put that in and that's your done. Now you can add this is optional if you want it to make it look like you're actually hitting something. You put in swing item, otherwise you wouldn't like swing your sword or anything. It'll attack mobs, but it won't swing. And obviously that's not a capital S. So yeah, that's that. Pretty much done for force field. Um, so I'm going to test this, and it will work. And it will work for any animal. If you just put an entity instead of entity living or entity mob, then it will start attacking items on the ground. And most servers will re recognise that and it will automatically kick you for attacking a ground entity. So you need to make sure you're always uh, attacking uh, some sort of living entity. My computer is kind of slow at this point because I'm also on Skype at the same time. I'm just going to get myself a diamond sword here and turn on force field and you can see like the mobs can't even get close to you without you hitting them and it'll attack multiple entities at once as well so like like if you've got like 500 zombies around you and they're all gathering around and as long as you've got a sword and plenty of food I'm um, pretty sure you can take them on you don't have to be looking at them either you can attack them from any direction as I'm about to show here just as long as you're close enough, you'll attack them from any direction, facing any way. You can see they don't really stand a chance of getting close. Now, now we're going to do our sneak hack. 
So that's a really simple code as well. What we're going to do is an R conditional operator, like we did for, um, I can't remember what the other conditional operator we done was for, but we're going to set for a sneaking, and right here it says boolean for two. What we're going to do is boolean for two equals um, the name of your class, which contains all the booleans, and then dot sneak or whatever your boolean was. So I'm going to say mods dot sneak, then I'm going to put a question mark, and that's basically it. like it's like an if statement. And then what we're going to type in now is as mods dot sneak on. If so, I want you to return true. Except we don't have to actually put the word true in because it's a function and it's not a method. So just put true and then colon and then this dot is sneaking. That's all you need to do for that. No, I tried I was gonna put a space in here but I kinda deleted a full word by accident, but whatever. Um so that's all you need to do for that, and that's not a semicolon after true, that is a full colon. Like you hold shift and then press the semicolon button and I'll get you one of those. In case you're in up to a keyboard for some reason. But um um, it's not actually like, it doesn't actually make you sneak, it just makes you look like you're sneaking on servers so people can't see your name. So I started up my little localhost server and I logged on into different test accounts. And you can see when I enable sneak, I'm sneaking. And I'm going to also do it in this account in a minute. And you can see that um, even though I'm sneaking, it doesn't slow me down, I can still sprint, I can still walk at normal speed. And yeah, you can probably see on the other screen on the left if you look closely, you could probably see me walking by. It's quite laggy, but that's only because I've got like a lot of my computer usage using used up. So yeah, here's a great example of false field as well. I've got strength beacons, so that's why that's why I was killing that guy so easily. But anyway guys, um that's about it for this tutorial. Um next tutorial, uh I show you here that I'm probably gonna be doing chat commands and um also possibly like a friends list for false field. So like if your friend is uh in your within your range and you're wanting to just attack other people except from your friend then you can add them but that's for an art episode uh, so yeah I don't know if there's going to be any more kind of uh, things apart from that in the next couple of weeks I'm not too sure I'll see what I can come up with but um, uh, thanks for watching this video um, please leave all your feedback please like the video subscribe for more uh, if you've got any suggestions about maybe hacks you want me to code, just leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. I'll see if I can manage it. And if you want to grief with us one day as well, you could also PM us. Um, we're also looking for more servers to grief. We actually just managed to pull off a massive grief on a server that's completely unprotected uh, as well. So that was quite good. It was on Ticket. Uh, anyway, that's about it. Here is that's me just saying about the chat chat commands. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time and bye.